Good afternoon, howdy friends. Coming to you late today because I've been in town with friends. Eating. One of my favorite pastimes. Today I'm going to share 1st, 2nd, and 3rd chapters of 1st Thessalonians with you. And I'll be back sometime soon with the rest of 1st Thessalonians. Starting in chapter 1 of 1st Thessalonians, Paul, Apostle Paul, and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. That's something important we need to be doing for all of the people who are in Christ all the time. We need to be encouraging, standing up for, praying for everyone who is in Christ and those who are not in Christ. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia, Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And that's what I did and that's what I pray all of you do if you haven't already done that. And the idols were not statues, they were all kinds of idols, but not the statues you think of when you hear the word idol. Anything that separates you from God is sin and some sort of an idol. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. We're already delivered. All we got to do is believe. If you believe, you will be delivered from the wrath which is to come very shortly, I feel. All right, continuing on. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that, we had... Hang on. I got two pages stuck together here. Sorry about that, folks. We had suffered before and were shamefully entreated. As you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but as pleasing God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, 
we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. That's the feelings we should have for Christians. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men." forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, but not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan's good at that. We need to flee from Satan. We need to avoid Satan at all costs. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother, and minister of God, and fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves, know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to you to know your faith, lest by some means the temperer have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. <clears throat> Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live, if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? Night and day pray praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. That's that for now, and I'll be back later today or tomorrow with more. And 
concentrate on what was read there. They were talking to true Christians and imploring true Christians to share the gospel just as they are. And that's what we're all supposed to do. It's not for preachers or Sunday school teachers or deacons. It's for every true Christian to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're all servants of the Lord. <clears throat> we all should be thankful enough for the salvation we have through Jesus Christ to go out and share that with the lost. So let's get busy, y'all. Talk to you later.